Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Rush Limbaugh eviscerates John McCain for his vile speech against President Trump. John McCain indirectly attacked President Trump in a speech about spurious nationalism. Rush Limbaugh didn't like this one bit and attacked him for it. This is the problem. What you're missing, sir, about this nationalism that you despise is its real intention is to once again assert this leadership of the world, to assert this guiding light and beacon of freedom. Because for way too many recent years people in your club have been buying into the notion that whatever the United States has been doing the last 75 years has been hurting people. The United States is the problem, said Limbaugh. The United States is blamed for climate change. What is that? Destroying the planet, no less. United States is blamed for this, it's blamed for that. We have to sit here and listen to how socialist and communist worlds and nations are much preferable to ours," said Limbaugh. What world do we lead? The United Nations exists to fleece the United States, to blame the United States. Barack Obama openly admitted that his purpose was to transform the United States, which means cut it down to size, he said. Senator McCain, with all due respect, you've got this totally backwards. Your club or members in your club are actively presiding over the decline of the United States as a leader in the world, as a beacon of freedom. Your definition of open and leading the world is to open our borders and let the disadvantaged race in. Sorry. That's not what leadership of the world means, said Limbaugh. Hillary's friend exposes how Hillary was lying when she said she had no idea about Weinstein. Linda Bloodworth, a Hollywood producer, creator of the show Designing Women, and close personal friend of the Clintons revealed that she had warned Hillary of Harvey Weinstein's creepy ways. However, Hillary ignored it. This is contradictory to the claim that Hillary made that she didn't know about Weinstein. I was just sick. I was shocked. I was appalled. It was something that was just intolerable in every way. Like so many people who have come forward and spoken out, this was a different side to a person that I and many others had known in the past," said Hillary. She was then asked if he got away with it because people knew and didn't say anything. Well, I certainly didn't and I don't know who did, responded Hillary. Linda Bloodworth wrote a story for The Hollywood Reporter called Linda Bloodworth Thomason. Lessons from Witnessing Four Decades of Harassment in Hollywood, guest column, where she contradicted Hillary's claim. One of the best friends I will ever have and a man I love dearly, former President Bill Clinton, has certainly taxed my feminist conscience, but always without diminishing my affection. I even helped write his apology to the nation for his own sexual misconduct, was sitting next to him when he delivered it, and believe to this day it was based on something that was none of our business she wrote. And yes, some may call it hypocritical, but I confess to having had no problem warning at least three top-level Democratic operatives against allowing Harvey Weinstein to host political fundraisers. A warning that evidently, and to the glee of Fox News, fell on deaf ears, she wrote. Trey Gowdy goes all out in brutal rant against Kami after new revelation in Hillary investigation. More and more information has been discovered indicating that Comey's tampered with the Hillary investigation. Comey had drafted a letter deciding not to charge Hillary before he even interviewed her. Trey Gowdy was not happy with this. We are going to talk to his present and former colleagues. May the 2nd is when these memos, these heavily redacted memos appear where they are discussing, internally, whether or not to make a charging decision. It's a month and a half later before he announces his decision, in early July. So, you've got, that's two months, two months, from May the 2nd until July the 5th, said Gowdy. There were two dozen witness interviews in that time period. So, 
if you're discussing whether or not to charge someone in early May, and you haven't interviewed two dozen witnesses, including one named Clinton, John Ratcliffe, our Texas, asked exactly the right question. I'm just not sure that Director Comey gave him an accurate answer, said Gowdy. Gowdy also said that Comey made a lot of decisions in 2016 that I think are worth reviewing, Congress should look at this decision not to charge, and whether or not it was made before you interviewed two dozen witnesses, including the target of the investigation. We need to talk to him again, said Gowdy. Country singer slams NFL and libs, just put out song called I'm Gonna Stand. Our country has obviously reached a low in terms of our racial divide and our lack of respect for everything the United States stands for when we see pampered, multimillionaire NFL players who believe they have been so wronged that they have to kneel during the national anthem. They claim that they are protesting against police brutality against African Americans, but they could find plenty of other ways to protest that don't involve directly insulting the national anthem, the American flag, and the U.S. military. It is, of course, very clearly an attempt to denigrate our country and not just a simple protest about the police. Thankfully, many others in our country are stepping up to counter these professional football players' hurtful actions. One person who felt inspired to go to work for America was country music singer Pat Garrett, who recently released a new single titled I'm Gonna Stand. In his song, Pat reminds Americans of all the reasons that they need to proudly stand for our flag. Sings Garrett, I'm gonna stand with my hand on my heart, because old glory represents the nation I love. The song continues, I'm gonna honor all those people who've died, as our symbol of freedom waves gloriously above. We're so lucky to live in the land of the free, won't you stand up alongside of me, because I'm gonna stand for the country I love. Said Pat to Allentown, Pennsylvania station WFMZ about kneelers, I guess they have a right to do whatever they please, you know, this is America. However, when they play the Star Spangled Banner, I'm gonna stand, and that's what this song is about. This isn't the first time Pat has tackled politics in his music. In 2008, his song Moose Shootin' Mama about Sarah Palin reached number four on the Billboard Country Music Chart. He also scored a country hit last year with the self-explanatory I'm voting for Donald Trump for president. Are you glad this singer is using his talents to make a bold statement in support of America? Hillary announces definitively whether or not she will run for president again. In a recent interview, Hillary Clinton revealed whether or not she would run again in 2020. In an interview before that, she claimed that kneeling while the national anthem was playing and not disrespectful. After President Trump heard this, he claimed that he wanted Hillary to run again in 2020 because he would wipe the floor with her if that is how she feels about our country. However, Hillary answered for sure, whether or not she will run for president ever again. No. I'm not going to run again," responded Hillary. I think I'm in a position where my voice will actually be magnified because I am not running, and there's a very good basis, as we watch Trump's support shrink, that people will say, well, what she said was right and now where do we go from here?" said Hillary. She went on to talk about her book. I'm trying to make the case about what we need to do so that what happened in my election doesn't happen again. But I'll also be raising money and support for candidates and causes I believe in. And I'll be supporting the Democratic Party in the elections this year, next year and 2020," she said. I thought I was going to win, I thought I'd have the awesome responsibility and great honor of being the first woman president. I had worked on a speech celebrating a victory, and it all came crashing down," said Hillary. Former Supreme Court Chief Roy Moore exposes how Kaepernick and NFL players are breaking the law. 
Many patriotic Americans have been furious with Colin Kaepernick and the other NFL anthem kneelers for their disrespect of our flag. However, according to Alabama Senate candidate and former Alabama Supreme Court Chief Roy Moore, these football players are actually breaking the law. It's against the law, you know that? It was an act of Congress that every man stand and put their hand over their heart. That's the law, said Moore in an interview with Time magazine. I back the president in upholding respect for the patriotism for our country, on two grounds. One, it's respect for the law. If we don't respect the law, what kind of country are we going to have? Two, it's respect for those who have fallen and given the ultimate sacrifice. I'm surprised that no one brought this up, said Moore. If they didn't have it in there, it would just be tradition. But this is law. If we disobey this, what else are we going to disobey? said Moore. Moore is referring to the 36 U.S. Code which discusses flag etiquette. All other persons present should face the flag and stand at attention with their right hand over the heart, and men not in uniform, if applicable, should remove their headdress with their right hand and hold it at the left shoulder, the hand being over the heart, it says. Read the full code here.